All right, today I'm gonna to show you how I make these trees. I'm gonna be completely honest with you though, these trees were not my idea. I got the idea, I was watching a YouTube channel called Carving Fusion, and Jordy on the channel there, he was making a bunch of these before Christmas and selling them. And I, I watched his videos and I was like, them things are awesome, I gotta have one. But I'm a cheap SOB, so instead of buying one of his, I decided to go in the garage and make my own. And then I decided to make a few more and sell them because I figured there's enough distance between us. I wouldn't be cutting into his market, but I waited to make a video on how to do it until after Christmas because I know, you know, he makes money off his videos too. But I figured there was enough differences between the trees he made and the ones I was making to warrant me making a video. Or in case you hadn't seen his video. But all credit goes to that Jordy at Carbon Fusion. Fusion because it was his idea but this is my interpretation of his idea now why would you want to make these things well you carve these things up the materials are cheap the lights are cheap I bought those lights gosh I want to say it was like two bucks a box or something like that after Christmas they, they go on sale and these trees you put them for like 50 bucks and they sell like hotcakes that people snap them up right away and I know it's not Christmas. Why would you want to make them now? Because it's no fun to sit down right before Christmas and try and batch out like 30 or 40 of something. So throughout the year, it's nice to break it up and make a few little projects like this and then just throw them in the closet. And then when Christmas comes, it's like money in the bank, man. Money in the bank. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get down to how I make these things. All right, first we get our piece of wood we're gonna use. Stick the old tape measure to her, or you can just eyeball it. I like to keep the trees around, I don't know, just a hair over 24 inches, so we'll cut this thing at about 26. All right. All right. Now that's done. All right, now you're gonna wanna pick which side of the board to put the front of your tree. On this board, it's not really going to matter because it's almost like the perfect cut. You know, the, the center's right there. So, I'll basically just eyeball it and see if it does have any kind of bow to it. And then, you know, I would want the crown or bow or whatever you would call it on the center of the front of the tree. You don't want your tree to curl backwards. Now, say you have a piece of wood like this. The lighting ain't really the greatest, but you can see the rings go like this. So, if this tree bows, it's going to, these rings always try to straighten out. So this part, these would kind of curl back, the edges on here, and this would be the part that's bowed out. So this would be the front of the tree. All right, now the fun part, draw on the tree. So I usually pick the bigger end and put that as my bottom. And then I, sometimes I'll find the center line, sometimes I just wing it. But like this one, about 10 inches wide, there's the center. So you could put this on if you're trying to be really particular and kind of eyeball it and find the center on the other end. Makes it a little easier. And a lot of times I'll do uh, trees with sway to it. In fact, I think I'll build two trees here. And I'll make one with sway and one that's straight. But I'll uh, draw the bottom of the tree. And remember, it's artwork. You can't really do it wrong. All right, there's our bottom. Maybe I will measure the actual stump. So say we go over to two. So that's three inches. One, two, three. And we go to eight. And then we just kick her over a little bit. All right, now like I said, this one I will probably do uh, more of a straight tree because it'll be easier to, to show you, but I'm gonna build a second tree that's curved too at the same time. In fact, I'll probably get the steps mixed up in this video. All right, just eyeball it with a ruler. <laughs> All right, there's our tree drawn on here. Perfect as can be. All right, now it's time to cut the tree out. There's plenty of ways or methods you can use to do that. I prefer either the bandsaw Then I like to round the edges using a flat disc. Alright, then after you get your tree roughed out, 
I like to bring it in the house. I put some X's on it. And there's 15 X's on it because there's 15 lights in the set of lights I'm going to use. I bought these at the local Menards. Uh, it was an after Christmas sale. I want to say they were like three bucks a box. This is what they look like. So basically what I'm going to go do, because there's 15 lights, I'm going to drill 15 holes, uh, roughly the diameter of these lights. And then we'll move to the next step. Alright, after you get your holes drilled, then you got to draw on your pine balls. I use the same method that uh, Jordy over at Carving Fusion uses, because I'm copying him. <laughs> Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, isn't it? I basically draw a line down the center. And then, to do the pine boughs, I basically go a little over the center line and just swoop it down. A little over center, swoop it down. I do change it up a little bit though, because once I get about halfway down, I add these center boughs because I really like the way it looks. Now you may be wondering, hey, there's notches cut out. Well, yeah, I went and I, on a bandsaw, I'll remove some material on the edges of these swoops, and you can tell it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm kind of way off the line. But uh, I do that just to speed up the process of making the tree. Uh, so, so basically, it's just like fish scales, and they're just going to overlap each other, right? So obviously, like, this one will overlap this one. So I always start at the bottom, and that makes it easier for me to keep track. And I just work up, so making it look like a tree, basically. Because that's what it's going to be. <laughs> what I use to uh, do this carving, I got a little flex shaft uh, Dremel tool. And this is a Cutsaw brand rotary burr. And it's an extreme, very coarse one, and it's just a little eighth inch shaft. And that seems to make quick work of it, and it's fun. It's easy to use. So I guess enough... Uh, Talking, time to get out there and get her done. For the stand portion what i like to use you can use the cut off from when you cut the tree out that's one of the most economical ways to do it so basically stick your hand figure out how tall you want her mm. we had zero yep cut her off now oh we got kind of a crack there do i want to use that ah it'll be fine now basically you set your angle i'd say four to five degrees is about where i find works for me so, let's see here. Alright, so now, when this is sitting flat, there's a 4 to 5 degree angle backwards, so then your tree sits, uh, leans back and it doesn't tip over. Simple enough. Then you take your carved trees and like first I'll take this and I'll stick the screws in there. Then I'll take a little bit of glue. Just using regular wood glue, nothing special. Smear a little bit of glue on there. Nice and pretty. Then you kind of center it up. Then you make sure you're not covering up none of your holes that you drilled for your lights. And you screw it on. Alright, so one end. Alright. And then there, that's how that tree will sit. I don't think that's looking too bad. Now once you have your trees kind of sitting upright, I like to take, you can use propane or map gas, but I like to burn the fuzzies off. Probably not the best idea to burn it over your dust collection table like this, but uh, ah, fires only happen to the other guy, right? <laughs> but this is boring to watch, so I'll actually take these off of here and I'll go burn the fuzzies off in another spot and show you when they're done. Alright, so here's the two trees with the fuzzies burned off. 
Now it's time to finish them up. All right, for painting this one, what I did is I'm going to put a coat of spring green on it, the spray paint, and then I'm going to go with a darker green, metal green, and after I spray the metal green with the two different contrasting greens, I'm hoping it gives it more of a 3D or realistic looking pop, and then I'm going to sprinkle some glitter on it just to make it a little more Christmassy. And then the other tree, I'm just going to put some clear coat on it. Alright, tree's all painted, glitter in the green there. You notice the trunk is brown. Basically just use craft paint and a little brush to do that. Now we get to install these lights. Basically picked these lights up at Menards. It was an after Christmas sale. I ended up buying them out. They're only like a couple bucks a piece. And they run on AA batteries. So basically you take them out of the box. You got the little thing. It looks like this. And you always want to put batteries in and test them. So these all work. And it's cool because they actually twinkle too. So they work. So we'll test. we tested them out. Now we basically take, stick them in a tree. You always want to stick them in the tree before uh, you start gluing because... It would suck if you didn't have enough holes or, <laughs> or or too many holes or whatever. I don't know. I, it's just the safest bet. All right. We'll get them all shoved in. And when I glue them in, you'll see on the light where they got the kind of heat shrink up on the wires. I just put that flush with the back of the tree. I don't worry about whether it protrudes out the front of the tree or anything like that. Okay. So we had to write them on the holes. Now the fun part. Basically, just lay the tree down. Like I said, you just want to take this. I like to, uh... Alright, now you can see it. Lay it down. Pull that out so it's about flush. Then gob some heat glue on there. Okay. Then we just go to the next one. Pull that out so the heat shrink is in the right spot. Gob some heat glue on there. And we just continue on through. Not the most exciting part of the project, but it's easy. So, I'll get these glued up and we'll check it out. All right, after you get that hot glued on, take some 3M VHB tape, just basic double-sided tape. Take your little box here, you stick it on the side that isn't the battery cover, because you want to be able to make sure you can get the battery cover off. So this side is a battery cover. So I'll stick it on the other side. And basically just stick it on. Now if you're feeling, uh, I'll probably take a little bit of uh, hot glue and hot glue that part to the back. But basically, this is what the back roughly looks like when she's done. And this would be the front. Oh. All right, here's the completed trees and what they look like. And again, they're art, so you can't really do them wrong. You just have fun with it and make, make them however you want. I think they're cool as heck. And other people must agree because they sell like hotcakes. So, uh... Yeah, grab a board, grab a Dremel, and have some fun. Make yourself a tree. This is a part I don't often show on my woodworking videos, but uh, this is basically where all my little crafts begin, or how their lives begin, I should say. Like this load of cedar logs here, uh, this will be for next year's winter crafts. Uh, between now and spring, it's January now, in spring, I'll be sneaking out here and uh, using a chainsaw mill and milling a bunch of these into boards. And then I will stack and sticker them and uh, let them dry all summer. And next winter, this is what I'll be building birdhouses and little crafts with. Uh, if you're curious on price, I found this batch of logs on Facebook Marketplace. I paid 200 bucks for it. But I did have to hand load it which was kind of a bear, but uh, 
it's it's doable you only gotta pick up one side of the log at a time <laughs> but like size wise say you walk up like this is one of the bigger logs i put my hand there i mean she's she's pretty big but all right i just thought i would share that because it's something i don't show very often